dear ones. We are Larkma, and we are here because we love you. We are also here because we are very interested in the choices that humans are making as you approach raising of consciousness and your own evolution. Tomorrow enters into the period of choosing, and choice has never been more appropriate for humankind than it is in this very moment. Choice is something that you need to be more and more aware of and how you think, what you feel, and how you approach everything in your life. Choosing is an important power that humans have, even though you may feel at times that you have no choice. We'd like to talk to you about several things today. Oh, we have so many things to talk to you about today. (laughs) The first thing we would like to do is address the physical aspects of the changes that are happening on the planet. Most of you are keenly aware that there is an increase in volcanic and earthquake activity. You are aware that there are weather changes. Patterns in weather that have always been consistent no longer apply. Earthquakes and volcanoes are happening in places that are not expected or predictable, as well as in those places that are long predictable. The magma core underneath the earth is coming closer and closer to the surface. And the plates of the earth are shifting more and more, and formations are readying themselves to move into new states of being, new formations that are different from what you are familiar with now. The planet is in a mass of motion. Not only that, but the planetary body itself is not particularly what we would call stable on her path. She is wobbling in her orbit, and the poles, move back and forth in such a manner that your weather is becoming more and more impacted by the movement, even though it is somewhat subtle at this time. We're not prognosticating or predicting that there will be a pole shift. We are telling you that the wobble is occurring already and that the poles are beginning to move as the Earth moves on her orbit. It's something you're living through and process now, not something that's going to happen tomorrow. But we want you to be aware of it because in this process where you are feeling things that you may not know what they are, you may find yourself feeling very dizzy or disoriented or feeling like you walk into things or you may have accidents, falling, tripping, cutting yourself. These are things that are indicative that your outer atmosphere is changing. Your sense of gravity is not the same as it was before. It's very important that you pay attention to this, for you cannot rely upon all of the sensations you have used in the past to guide you to walk through a door, for instance, and not bump into the side. This is going to apply a great deal when you're watching other drivers when you're on the road, for all humans will be disoriented somewhat as this shift is occurring. You may notice when you look at formations of birds in the sky, that they're not as crisp or clear as once they were. This is an indication that the birds are feeling the gravitational pull and that their magnetics are being affected and they cannot hold a formation in the way that they used to in moving from one point to the other. This is the exact same thing that we are talking about for humanity. For you also are feeling the effects of a gravitational shift and a change in your magnosphere. Not only does it come from the core shifting up under you, the plate shifting and the magma core coming to the surface, but it also is occurring because of the solar flares and sunspots. As the sun has sunspots and generates solar flares to the earth, you are experiencing more and more radiation, which we have talked about previously, causing you to feel itchy, causing you to feel tingly, causing you to feel hot and then cold and not being able to figure out what your temperature is. These are the physical effects of your adjusting to a new radiation state. Not that it is bad, but that it is different. You have to have a higher radiation, meaning more light within your physical form, in order for you to move into rainbow body form. So this is part of the process, but that doesn't mean that it is comfortable. We just want you to be educated about what it is you are experiencing and also to caution you to be careful and not to assume 
that your environment is the same as it always has been. These are important concepts about your physical. Your environment, externally, we've been talking about, and now we will talk about your environment internally. You may find that solid foods, heavy cooked meals, heavy diet, no longer suit your physical form. You may be drawn more and more to eating white and green food, which we have always encouraged as your path towards rainbow body. More salads, more fresh green drinks, lighter food, more of everything that comes straight from the earth fresh, with a balance of appropriate protein, such as hemp seed, things like that that are light on the earth's footprint and good for the body of the humans that are evolving. We also suggest a supplement that you may use to help within this transitional process. You may use the supplement of sea buckthorn. That's sea, like the ocean, buckthorn. That supplement will help your body adjust to the increased radiation that you are experiencing. We encourage you not to travel by air unless necessary because you are increasing the amount of radiation that you experience and that does not necessarily give your human form time to adjust to the increasing radiation in a slow way. It instead gives you too much radiation at one time. So if you must fly or work or for something personal that is necessary, increase the sea buckthorn that you take and help your body to adjust to the need to travel by that mode. The shield from the solar flares that are coming into the Earth in the Earth's changing magnetosphere are also thinning, which means that you get the effects of radiation much more quickly and much more deeply. Therefore, if you're flying at thousands of feet up in the air, the shields are even less, and you will be receiving even more of the radiation. So this is a cautionary thing for you to be aware of which will be increasing over the next two years, particularly increasing next year in 2019. This is our perspective. Always we tell you we don't make predictions, but this is what we see that is occurring in the process now. You may be feeling no appetite, tremendous appetite, not being able to keep your food without nausea. You may be having unusual urges to eat lighter food, all of these things are part of the shift where your body is beginning to adjust to being fueled by lighter nutrition rather than the heavier nutrition. We'd like to move now from the physical into the mental, and we want to discuss human consciousness and human intelligence. For the longest time, humans have been focused upon raising the intelligence, more education, more being able to glean and understand varying things that come from the world of facts, hoping that this raising of their education would raise their intelligence, hoping that learning more and more things would help them become smarter. What has occurred is there has been a mix-up between intelligence and consciousness. Consciousness is not about the mind. Consciousness is about the totality of the human spirit in a human body using the mind feel that you have been given and being guided by the intuition within your heart. Raising human consciousness is not the same as increasing your intellect. Those of you who are encouraging your children or infants to learn how to be part of the digital age, giving your toddlers smartphones or tablets so that they learn how to punch those keys are encouraging intelligence, but you are not encouraging raising of consciousness. We caution you that there's a choice here and choosing to go towards more and more understanding at the intellectual level, which is knowledge, or more and more understanding at the intuitive level, which is wisdom. You will notice that we always say we bring wisdom from the stars. We never say we bring knowledge from the stars. For knowledge is continually changing according to circumstance, according to facts, according to belief system. The things that you rely on as knowledge and to use to increase your intelligence are not helping you evolve consciously. 
what this pattern has done for humanity is thrust you right into the arms of artificial intelligence, which we can assure you has zero consciousness. What we'd like for you to become more and more aware of is the artificial intelligence that exists all around you. How often do you pick up the phone to call a credit card company and you know it's not a human on the other line, it's a machine? How often do you get lost in internet going from one site to the next to the next, allowing it to lead you to the next place of your curiosity, hoping to increase your knowledge, hoping to find something to help you understand intellectually? You are not going to understand the changes that are occurring to you now, intellectually. It is impossible, for they exist outside of any knowledge humanity has ever held before. The changes you are going through now are evolutionary at a conscious level. They have to do with understanding through your intuition, that is, what feels correct in your heart. Consciousness has to do with conscience. Conscience does not have to do with mind. It has to do with heart. The reason so many people seem not to have a conscience these days is because they are disassociated from their hearts. They are entirely attached to what they feel is right or wrong in the mental realm. Which takes us to the next thing we wish to discuss, and that is your idea of right and wrong or dark and light. This is an important concept that we wish for you to integrate at the heart level, not at the mind level, even though we are speaking so that you can listen to it and try to assimilate this wisdom at the intellectual level too. You need to be able to feel the difference between what is of conscience of your heart and what is not of conscience, but in your mind. The great split that you are seeing in duality on the planet today has to do with what we talk about often of the battle between the dark and the light. But we would like to escalate the wisdom of your understanding what that battle means. Yes, it is no secret that there is a battle between the dark and the light, but it is not as you conceive of it in third dimensional terms where there are Darth Vader's on the dark side and people with light swords on the light side. It's not a battle of that sort. The difference is that dark is no more wrong than light is right. They are energy. And this is a very key concept. Energy. It doesn't mean that your night sky, which is dark, is evil or bad. Nor does it mean that a bright sunny day is better than one that is cloudy or than a night sky. There is no difference in terms of energy. But the difference you are perceiving and experiencing where you know something is occurring that feels out of conscience, that feels wrong, that feels as if it is harmful, that is an alignment of energies with dark energy. Dark does not in and of itself bring these negative things to humanity of the planet. However, those that have been trying to manipulate the planet have used the core energy of dark to focus their forces and to project them onto the human field. Those who have been battling to help humanity raise their consciousness have been working primarily with light, as we spoke of in our message today, asking you to shine your light into the darkness. But we want you truly to take this understanding out of the third dimensional good versus evil understanding of knowledge into the heart's wisdom that dark and light are energy, and energy attracts like energy. So if the dark has been using dark to focus its dark attacks, then it is not the fault of the dark at all. It is the fault of those who are manipulating that type of energy. Understand? It is not the dark as if it is an entity in and of itself. It is those who are using the energy of darkness to focus their attacks and their forces on humanity and on the planet. This is why it is so important for us to help you understand that when you shine the light of who you are into darkness, you are exciting the energies of 
love and compassion, exciting them to vibrate at a higher frequency, moving into the dark territory so that the energy of the dark can recognize living energy of the light and can say, oh, yes, we have living energy too, and perhaps we can respond differently than the way that we have. Your part on this evolutionary journey is not to think about and focus upon fighting or resisting the dark. Your path is to focus upon being the light, shining the light into all dark places, illuminating everything that seems or feels like it is out of conscious. We ask you to begin to redefine how you discern things, rather than seeing it as right or wrong, harmful or helpful. Begin to simply ask the question, is this within conscious? And that means, is this in alignment with the heart energy of love? That's the most important thing for you to ask in this time. And then this 13-day period that begins tomorrow, we ask you to please consciously choose everything. Remember, is this in consciousness with every thought that you think? Is this in consciousness with the way that I feel? Is this in consciousness with what I'm choosing to do? And when you ask it, remember that being in consciousness is being aligned with your heart. 